Okay, uh, peeperonis. Uncack here. Just uh, getting my first look at a, a K31 I just got. I just brought it home last night. Just brought it home last night. Haven't done anything to it. I just put a brush and a patch, some patches down the bore, clean it, so I can get a good look at it. So this is, um, figured I'd just take you along for a little bit of the ride, what I look at when I get one, I get a, a new one in, a K31 Rescue basically is what I call these things. This K31 doesn't understand or realize how lucky it is to have found itself in my hands, for lack of a better way to put it. So I want to go over... Uh, some stuff, some observations and things I look for on it and, and uh, we'll just go through the procession. Here's some tools that uh, I use. Of course you're going to want, you're going to want to, you're going to want to get a good fitting screwdriver that fits the screws well. You don't want to nick up the screws. Trust me, just do what you need to do to get a good fitting screwdriver so that you don't nick up the screws. Trust me, you'll hate yourself later if you don't. And um, this is a throat erosion gauge. As you can see, it's a uh, gauge beach bore. It's for an M1 M1 Garand, um, but it works really well on a K31 too. Just have a caveat of the fact that your zero reference point with this is not zero. It's basically two. Like new barrels, we'll check a two with this thing, and then you can go from there. Um, and a trigger pull gauge is just to try to kind of get the uh, idea what the trigger's like in it. I can already tell though from having pulled the trigger on it once, it's uh, going to be mil spec. Some kind of little inspection light. I just got this little guy right here. Works pretty well for all kinds of different stuff. And then this is a Forester um, headspace gauge. Right. So we'll check headspace on this thing. Little uh, little mini pry bar thing. Trust me, you're going to need that later, and I'll show you why. So those are just a few things that I, you're going to need to start with. And um, I think what the first thing I'm going to do is uh, do some inspections of it. My overall impression of this rifle is, and this is one of the reasons why I selected this, And of course, granted, I was only working off of pictures when I bought it. But it looked to be solid. I didn't see any cracks in it. I didn't see any horrendous uh, disfigurations of it. It's used, I can see that, and it's used. But what I like is I think this is an original rifle. Um, I haven't looked at anything. I don't know if it, I don't I don't know if it's got a um, tag under the butt plate or not. But everything about it tells me the way it's wore. There's the wear markings on it and stuff and all that is. I think this is an original rifle. Um, first off, starting at the front. Of course, you want to look at the muzzle. They always have beautiful muzzles on them. The uh, front. The front here, you see how the bluing is wore off of it, which is commensurate with the way they were handled in the field. A lot, a lot of handling going on up here around the muzzle and front sight. And looking at the front sight, it looks it's unmarked, I think, which means it's a standard, it's just a standard K31 front sight as would have been issued. Barrel band, another thing I look for that I like. This whole area in front of the front barrel band, I like to see it complete without without dings or chips or being disfigured in any way. This is pretty good. This one's in nice shape. That one will clean up good because that makes the rifle right there. That's one of those little spots that is for the overall appearance of the rifle is important. And the handguard appears to be solid. I don't see any cracks in it. Of course, if you see that right there, you see how that's a fresh. That goes through the, finish, the current finish on So that has happened since it was well since it was made, probably recently. And uh, alright, a couple things else I see here on this side. That mark there is from the uh, sling clasp 
as it was being carried and the way this rifle was carried was this was carried across this guy's back whoever had this in the field this rifle was carried across the guy's back flat this side flat against his back you see that's what all this marking is and that's what that is from is being slung over his back um, flat and uh, typical back here some water intrusion from being used and out in the field from being set in the snow overnight on while the soldiers were on bivouac and then the water finally gets in, in, in under the finish a little bit and discolors the wood fortunately I'm looking for the fact that if it, it's in good shape right it's all good tight wood around here looks like it's pretty much unmolested there too I see unmolested here I see an unmolested rifle wear all the wear up here on the front receiver and around the sight and stuff you want to see that the the sight has its its, its settings work it does all very worn the bluing is very worn around here you see because that's how this thing was handled this rifle was this rifle's been in the field and what I see here too is it is a 787337. I've looked it up. This is early 1944. Probably one of the first uh, Beechwood stocked K31s, I would think. By the numbers and how many were made in 1944, if you just all things being equal, I would say this was made probably in the first, uh, late in the first week or into the second week of January of 1944. That would be my guess probably second week of January 1944 it was made good rifle I think beech wood is a great wood good platform for for what it's doing it's dense straight wood is uh, lends itself well to staying rigid and dimensionally the way it should yet it still has the uh, wood the wood thing going on which kind of softens makes the rifle feel almost has some living character to it as opposed to plastic rifles that have no feeling of that at all um, but I'm looking to you see I'm looking back here but things you're gonna want to see you want to see if make sure there's no cracks at the back of the butt by the upper butt plate screw you want to see that that isn't split there and we're gonna take a better inspection when I take the butt plate off and see from the inside if there's any cracks going on once again you're gonna want to look back here at the tang it could be it could be cracked. Usually they're just su superficial, but it means that tang has been in contact with the back edge of that stock, and maybe the screws weren't quite tight in it the way it should have been. Variable things, but you want to look for a crack there. I want to see a good clean comb too on it. No big. I can handle some minor imperfections. All that stuff will come out just fine. But I don't want to see any big marks where it actually cuts into the wood grain because this part here is the part that meets your face you know it's like uh, you're gonna feel this whatever it is so I gotta see a nice good clean comb there it's got serial numbers and what I'm seeing there it's kinda interesting usually the serial numbers are only the last four digits of the whole serial number this one looks like it has five digits 87337 87337 right that's kind of that's a little different so I don't know what that means but I'm seeing and of course the bolt sleeve you can see it is still the original arsenal stamping of that serial number into that bolt sleeve that's good that tells me that this is an original rifle also and I can tell by the bolt sleeve looking at it let's open it up see and I can tell by looking at the bolt sleeve that it's all commensurate with the wear on it the the wear showing on the bolt sleeve itself original numbers the the coloration of the, the steel at this point stainless steel knob of course they don't get this color that is stainless steel right there that's what that wood metal is that, for the op rod right that's good okay pull the bolt out of it pull the magazine out of it I want to get a uh, want to get a feeling for how the uh, how well the bolt works 
right? So with the magazine out, it's pretty easy. Pretty, it's, I can tell. It's very smooth. Feels good. Feels very good. All right. Next thing we're gonna do. See what kind of trigger pull. This is just a cheap trigger. This is just a cheap trigger pull gauge, but it works. Gives me a basic idea of what the heck it is I'm looking at here. Throw a snap cap in it so I can fire it. All right. Let's try it again now. Okay. Let's try that. I'm seeing about 28 ounce on that first stage. Let's go. 72. Yep, I'd say that thing breaks somewhere around 76. 75, 76 ounce. It just went slightly over the 72 ounce on my cheesy trigger pull gauge. Okay, so that's a uh, mil spec trigger right there. That's pretty much commensurate with. Everything I see that it hasn't been messed with. Um, next thing I want to do is I want to take my Badger Ordnance, Ordnance, another funny word, and uh, let's check it. Let's see where this thing will go in the throat erosion gauge. Like I say, I can tell this thing's been shot, it's been used, it's been in the field. I think it's a, an original rifle. And let's see here. I would say looking down I think we're about a three and a half three and a half to four I give it a three and a half to four on the throat erosion like I say a brand new barrel will check around two if you look at that throat erosion gauge right there zero it's marked zero to nine each whole number represents one thousandth of an inch difference in the uh, diameter of that throat. Um, like I say, a new K31 barrel starts out at like two. This is showing three and a half to four. So this has got a thousandth and a half to two thousandths of wear I'm seeing on it from what these normally come come like. But there's, that's not the only check we can make on it. So let's uh, let's see. In other words, this this rifle has been Okay, so like I say I can tell that this rifle has been shot. You see the the usage marks on the bolt sleeve. This is all fits. Of course, on this side, good strong cartouche right there. Yes. So that's some of them are pretty faint, even even if they haven't been touched, and they won't take much to ruin them. A good arsenal butt plate will fit very nicely. They fit them good. You're going to want to look to see if the butt plate hangs over or isn't fit correctly along the line here. But I can see from up here and how it's up into the up into the wood, pressed into the wood a little bit there. This is a good good fit. You see, another thing I'm looking for here is the bottom of this right side of the stock. Some of them were beat to hell because of the nature of how they were used in, Alp, in the Alps. The butt play, the butts were put in in the in the snow or in the uh, at night when troops went on bivouac. They built little teepees out of them. That's what the locking lug is up front for. And uh, then in the morning they come out. These things were frozen in the snow, so they use their hobnail boots and kick them to loosen them up. And that's how they get so beaver chewed. A lot of them. This one is not too bad. This one's going to clean up. I just see dings and some dings and dents, but not from the boot, not from so this like I say, this thing was this thing was carried across this guy's back. Okay. Looking for you're gonna wanna look for cracks here too, especially on walnut stocks. You're gonna wanna look. Sometimes they'll crack right here where that cutout is, they'll crack down this away. 
finger mortises is clean. Yeah, I'm looking looking at the finger mortises right here. This one anyways, it looks nice and clean. It's good, not gouged or anything. That'll, that'll clean up nice. Good crisp line around here. Straight, straight edge along there. Everything's square. This edge is nice and clean. Another thing that you're going to want to look for is this hand guard. This is a pretty good clue too if this is an original factory piece. You want to see this hand guard is going to be fit. Those armors, when they put these together, they match the wood. And however they did it, these hand guards usually fit like this one, like tight. Tight, very tight. See how the see how the lines and the edges all line up? That tells me that this is a arsenal built rifle. And this handguard is in pretty good shape, it looks like. Got one little divot there, kinda. Interesting. Let's take a look. Once again, I see where the bluing up here was worn off. Let's look at the bottom of it. Okay, starting at the back. See, once again, you're going to want to see that. That's a really good fit. That's a perfect arsenal fit right there. That hasn't been messed with. Down here, it's got some marks, some beaver chewing type stuff, you know, from just probably from being hit and banged around. It's got some marks through here. I'm looking at all these edges here. These edges are clean, though, you see. There's no splits or cracks or anything on these edges. You want to look for that there. Right in here too, you're going to want to see this nice and clean in here. It's got one little one little mark right there. 95% of that will come out when it's all said and done. Got some marks up here. Some discolorations. Good. In front of here, you see that? How nice and clean that is still. It's not missing, not chipped or any of that stuff. It's good shape. No damage to speak of. Just some dings and dents. A little bit. Nothing, nothing that will affect its performance or its overall appearance. A couple other things you want to look for on this side is... You're going to see, if you can see that, you see that discoloration right there? That comes from the sling swivel and the sling on it. On some of them that were used a lot or however, that whole thing is very worn and it's actually divoted. It's actually worn the wood down or compressed it. This is just barely through the finish. And what I'm looking at too is you're going to want to see this sling swivel. Is it tight in there or is it all loose and stuff like it's been used a million, 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 million times? This one is, see, this one is tight in there. That's good. I like that. It means that rifle wasn't kicked around too much. It looks like it was just worn. More than anything, it looks like it was just worn. It was shot, though, obviously from the throat erosion reading. It's been shot. This has got rounds through it, but my guess is when I take it apart and look at some stuff, I think this rifle will probably be stupid accurate when I range test it. This rear sling bar you got to be really careful about getting that thing out of there, boys and girls, if you're going to take this thing apart, because you'll pull chips of wood with it. If you aren't careful and go to certain, take certain measures, you're going to take it and just quickly, you're going to take it and break the screws loose. If you need to get a heat gun and heat those things up a little bit first, but you don't want to nick the screws, get a good fitting screwdriver and just break them loose. Once you break them loose, you're good to go. You get them out, and then you're going to want to take and push back this wood around the edges of this sling bar here. With I got a little uh, pocket screwdriver with the rounded off tip on it that I use just kind of to work that wood back, break that seal between the the uh, finish and that uh, sling bar, top and bottom. Then I'll heat it up. I'll use my heat gun to warm it up, and then I'll get a wooden dowel and a mallet, and I'll bang on it. Not hard. Just move it, bang on it, and then I get this. Then you're going to want to put that under there and just start tapping on it. Just start tapping on it, moving it, tapping it, work it until it comes loose. It takes patience. And then when it starts to move, you're going to want to make sure that it's not going to pull any wood loose here. If need be, you push it back down and work it until it'll come out of there without damaging the wood. This job is getting us out of here. Don't take it lightly. It's almost like a complete skill set all by itself. Obviously, another thing you're going to want to do is just inspect your magazine. Of course, this one is a 
original numbers matching. Like I say, I think this is a original rifle right here. That's how you put a wanna look down in there. Just kind of see what you got going on. Shouldn't be much of anything down there. Just look, make sure the spring is in good shape. Right? And then put it back together. That's good. Okay, pull the pull the bolt out. Right? And of course if you want to pull the bolt uh, down, <clears throat> Gonna want to see it. We'll tear that down after a little bit here, but I can tell from the wear on it. Once again, this thing. I think this all belongs together. Okay, next. Let's take the uh, let's take the butt plate off of this thing and see. And you're going to want to be careful when you do this. You're going to want to break this bottom one loose. Just break it loose and then break the top one loose. You're going to want to have those screws come off of there so they don't, uh, they're not working against each other because of the angle of it. You can, if they don't unlatch from the butt plate readily, it'll maybe want to pull the, the butt plate and the other screw with it. This one comes right off though. Let's see what we got here. Yes. <laughs> good butt plate look at it nice clean butt plate this thing wasn't beat around on the rocks in the Alps like I say this rifle was carried across this guy's back and check this out there you go K787337 1928 this Finn Rysik, Demel, Demil, that's probably his address right there, probably the city. This is an original rifle. This thing, I'm going to tell you how this thing was used. This thing was fielded to this guy. 28, let's see, 28, 38, 48. I would bet you that this rifle was actually issued to this guy somewhere Somewhere in 1946, going by the age of when he would have been a conscript. That's his birthday, 1928. I bet this rifle was issued to him in 1946. Um, let's see what the... Uh, that's good. The usage of this rifle then. The use of this, this is the progression of this rifle. It came out of the arsenal, was issued to Rysik. A guy in the tag, he carried it for however long in, serve for, in service, and then it was sent back to the arsenal and left completely alone. It just sat in the arsenal until it was put on a boat to come here and get sold to me. That's, that's pretty amazing. This is a 19, see if you look, See if you look, that's that's September 1943. This stock was made. The serial number, like I say, the stock, the serial number shows me that this rifle was actually produced. The receiver was actually produced in January, early January of 1944. See now another thing you're gonna want to look for here. Get this. You're going to want to look. You're going to want to look at that right there. Because you're going to see if there's crack or anything in it, you'll see it right there. And this one looks good. See, this is where you get your little light out. Your this is where you get your stupid little light out see that no crack this is not on crack nice good solid wood there 
Can you boys see that? Nice good solid wood right there. And that upper butt plate screw. Okay, so far I am pretty happy with what I'm seeing here. This is an original rifle. I like it. Let's pull off the handguard, see what we get underneath the handguard. Undo the front. And you're going to want to be careful pulling this loose. It may not want to come loose. It might be in there tighter than shit. Because you can pull wood chips loose with it if you're not careful. See, I just felt that snap loose from the upper part of the barrel band. If they're tight as you unscrew that, it's going to want to pull it apart with the wood. So you kind of want to just work it. Ooh, look at that. Look, 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 look. That came off. Nice. Come on, baby. Come on. It... Nice. See that? Boom. No muss, no fuss. They don't all come off that easy, though. They don't all come off that easy, though. You've got to be careful doing it. You don't want to pull any wood with it. There's one tiny little chip right there from before. That could have been, looks like maybe it could have been hit by something there. Let's take this one. Take this band loose. Press the release. And slide it off. See, now this tells me just by the wear on it and all that, it, this is part of it. This is original. There. There we go, right there. Nice beech wood handguard. 787337. What you're going to want to look here, you see, you can see the arsenal finish where it went to. Nice tight lines and edges along this whole handguard. And then up here, you see this here? This is unmolested. This is a, the, the uh, pad in the, that holds the barrel tight up, up front here at the muzzle. That's unmolested. That's beautiful. That has not been tampered with. This is, I'm liking this. Now here's something else you're going to want to do. Okay, now something you're going to want to take a look at when you've got the hand guard off of it. You're going to want to stand it on end, on its butt end. And then just kind of get a, see some, let me show you something here. Just get an idea to see how that barrel is fit in relation to the stock. See it there? It is just, it's just hanging in there. Right, you can see that, can't you? How oh, it's just in there. You see that stood on end. It's all neutral in there. It's all neutral in there. You see that? That's standing up on end. Okay. See, but when it's laid over in shooting position, the way the two come together is see how uh, it just preloads that barrel just a little bit just slightly see that so just the weight of it being leaned forward puts that barrel in an absolutely basically neutral position with just a little bit of preload on that barrel right here in the, in the uh, stock And when that handguard is put in place and tightened around it, it holds that whole thing back here. The handguard just has this cute little tab on it. Right like there. And it slides under. Slides under the... See that there? just catches there and it just catches the tips just catches the tips of that little protrusion there just the tips is all it catches right there but it slides under there and that holds the back end of it in place and then see that so when that's tightened down that whole rifle is tuned it's all nothing. It's all lined up. It's beautiful work right there. Okay, let's uh, let's take the uh, 
Take the trigger guard off. Uh, let's separate the receiver from the stock. See what we got going on. Of course, what I'll do is I'll always just break the rear loose just a little bit first. There we go. Like that much right there. And then I'll come up here to the front and I'll just break it loose. There. Good. Alright. Now you're going to want to look for the uh, how well these screws are. You see this one here? I can feel it. It's a little bit off center. It's got a little wobble in it. See it there? Can you see that screw as it's turning? So some of the screws are better than others. Some of them are straight as hell. I don't know whether they get bent or they're not machined right or what. But And this rear one is not too bad. Just uh, it can be the same thing though. I can already see the trigger guard is just loose on it. You're going to want to check and make sure to look at for damage along this edge here. You don't want to see any damage. You want to make sure when you pull the trigger guard out, not all of them just fall out like that one just did. Um, when you pull it loose, once again, don't pull any wood with it, right? Don't want to damage your stock pulling that trigger guard out. To take it apart now, we just simply stand it up on end and separate the two pieces out. Yep, there we go. There's your, there's your big number right there. Nice piece of beech wood right through there, huh? Look at that. Nice screw. And then again up here, untouched. This bearing surface right here between the perfect. This rifle is going to shoot great.